Hey guys, welcome back to Rocky Mountain Homestead. Tonight I have been outside working with the animals all day and um, it is late. It's late in the evening and so I wanted to take you guys along. I'm doing a quick pizza recipe right now. A long time ago somebody asked for my recipe. I have multiple recipes. Um, I use a different dough recipe for calzones. I use a different dough recipe for French bread pizza, but tonight I'm going to show you how I make a huge sheet pan pizza um, for our family when we're trying to be quick and on the go. So I'm going to jump right into it. One and a half cups of warm water. I have one tablespoon of yeast and I have one tablespoon, oops, wrong one. I have one tablespoon of sugar and I am going to get my whisk and give that a little bit of a mix. And I have a dry active yeast that I'm using that I actually pulled out of my freezer. So I'm going to put that back on. And then the next thing I am going to do is add in about, whoop, about three cups of flour to start with. So this is a half cup. So let's do half. Oops, making a mess. One. Half. two, half, three. And I'll have the ingredients down in the description below. Um, but I'm probably going to add a little bit more flour. I usually do. But for now, we're going to start with three cups. Followed by that, I'm going to add one and a half teaspoons of salt. I'm using sea salt, but you can use regular table salt. I have one tablespoon of basil. We like to season our dough. Um, that's our choice. You don't have to. So um, that was the one tablespoon of basil. And then I have about, I, you might as well just call it a teaspoon of garlic. I do a seasoned crust as well, not just a seasoned dough. Um, so for me personally, I use three quarters teaspoon of garlic. And then let me grab my dough hook. And then I need to get my oil because that's the only thing I did not have ready to go. So I am going to add one and a half tablespoons of olive oil. So there's half, one, half. And this is a half tablespoon measurement. So I have that. And that's it, you guys, um, pretty much. So I'm going to now lift this up. I'm going to put this on a level two and... As soon as it starts lifting, if it's sticking to the bowl, I'm going to show you. Um, let me see if I can get you closer. Okay, I cannot really angle you with this cage around this KitchenAid to actually see in. Um, but if I need to add in more flour, I will let you know. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, I think I've only gone up to three and a half cups total. So I'm going to let this go. Now, this is a great pizza. Um, I'm gonna, you can do a stuffed crust with this and I'll show you as we get to that phase. You can do a lot of things with it. Um, all different types of toppings. We've done barbecue, bacon, chicken, um, whatever. So whatever you guys like for your family, it varies for us. It's always what we have on hand, but this is just, and this is something easy where like you could do half this for your family if you had pickier eaters and half that. It's a big tray that I have. I'll give you the exact measurements. Um, when we get to that point and it looks like I am going to need to add that half cup of flour. So I'm going to get half a cup of flour. I am going to go ahead and add in a little bit at a time, but I think I already know I'm going to need this whole half cup and we'll just wait till that gets mixed in. And I know for sure I am going to need the rest because it's still sticking to the bowl. So that should do it. Okay, it's so hard to show you with my camera not really focusing because there's moving parts. Um, but I cannot lift this cage while it is operating. So even after that half cup, it's sticking a little bit. So I'm going to add a quarter cup more. Okay, so tonight it actually took three and three quarter cups of flour. So usually it's three and a half. Tonight was three and three quarters. 
I always start with three, and if I need to add more, great, because you can always add more, but you can't take away once it's in and you don't want to dry dough. So now that that is coming clean off the bowl and um, spinning beautifully, I'm going to go ahead and set my timer for five minutes, and I will bring you back in five minutes. All right, it has been five minutes, and it is still completely off the bowl, so... I am going to go ahead and get this off the hook and onto the counter. I just washed. All right, don't mind my kids in the background. They're probably going to be loud. The little boys are getting washed up for the night. They've been playing hard outside. I've been playing hard. I've been holding goats all day. Um, my goats and my friends. So I've been at his house. He's the one who wanted to um, sell us his goats that he has. The two moms in milk with the four babies, and uh, I'm I'm starting to think maybe I should maybe I should do that this year. So um, that might be happening here soon. So what I'm going to do now um, is just it's you know it's a slightly sticky dough. I took my rings off, washed my hands, washed my counter. I just like to knead it by hand for like an additional minute. I don't even time it. Um, and then I form it into a dough ball and I will put this in my oven because I actually have a proof setting um, to proof bread dough and stuff like that on our oven. Um, we made sure to get that when we bought our house and had to buy appliances. So I have my proof setting. You can also put it in a bowl with a damp towel over the top and set it under like if you have under cabinet lighting, which I don't, um, or I would show you and, de and demonstrate that too. You can put it in your microwave. You can turn your oven light on and just pop it into, oh, I'm crooked, sorry. <laughs> um, you could just also turn your oven light on and uh, pop it in there, just the warmest spot in your kitchen. So now that I've kneaded it for about a minute, like I said, sticky dough, see? It's sticky, but it doesn't like leave anything on your hand. And watch, I say that and it's going to, it is sticky. It's a sticky dough, but it shouldn't leave anything on your hands. Um, so I'm going to pull and tuck and there you go. Look at that, guys. I don't know. Maybe my lighting's a little too extreme. I like see a glare off of it from my view, but perfect dough ball. I'm going to spray because I've already put my oil away. Um, I just have some olive oil, use whatever you like to, and I am going to use the same bowl because who wants to do more dishes, and I'm just going to slap it in there, roll it around, get it coated. I ran a tea towel of mine, um, dish towel, whatever, my crazy chicken lady towel. I put it under warm hot water in the sink, wrung it out. I just like to do that. And I am now going to put this in the oven and I'm going to let it rise. It's actually cold because I let my windows stay open too long today and it's like practically dusk right now. Um, so I'm going to probably let this rise for 40 minutes. If it's hot during the summer, 30 is usually good, but I'll be back in 40 minutes. While it's rising, I usually like to clean my surfaces, clean my mess, because I surely made one, um, wipe everything down. And uh, I usually like to get my toppings chopped up, ready to go, but I actually need to help my daughter, daughters get our chickens in because they free range and they're being stubborn right now and running all over the place. And we had a bear, a bear nearby last night. So it is getting really dark now and I'm gonna go help them wrangle up chickens and hopefully have time to get the toppings ready before I take you guys back. All right, um, I did have enough time to wash my hands and um, come in. So what I'm going to do, I like to do cornmeal on the bottom so it's nice and crisp, but I don't have like ready to go cornmeal. Um, anyway, I just want to say if you guys don't have a mill, I don't know if you mill wheat berries or anything, I do wheat berries and corn and stuff like that. Um, this is like the best one to get, so not sponsored, but I, I have found the Wonder Mill. I, it's lasted me years and it works great.
if you guys would be interested, I know it sounds like a spaceship, if you guys would be interested in knowing recipes that if you use wheat berries, um, go ahead and leave that down in the comments below. I do an incredible buttermilk cornbread with the dried corn. Azure Standard's been out, but I did hear corn was like really bad this year, this season. I think it was last year too. So I've had it in my cart twice. We'll see the third time is a charm. Um, but I'm getting low and my five gallon bucket's getting low. So anyway, um, if you guys want some recipes using this mill and you want to know how to make things using it, let me know. I could do some videos on that. And um, I'm probably not going to need as much as I ground up. I'll give the rest of the chickens tomorrow because I'm I don't not making anything with this anytime soon. And um, it is, you know, fresh, so it doesn't last very long like this. But anyway, just perfect texture, perfect. I love it. Okay, I've had these pans since 2020. I usually, usually always use Crisco on my pans just because I feel it works better. But I don't feel it like getting it. These, by the way, this dimension is a 21 by 15. I got it for 28 bucks. It's actually on sale right now, 36% off at $17. So if you guys, and I know there's stains. I don't, I don't have time to deal with it. <laughs> don't have time to pretty it up for the camera. Sorry. Um, but it's clean. It's been washed. And I'm just going to sprinkle the cornmeal. I really, truly think the Crisco works better, but this will work. And that's all I'm going to do is just put a layer of cornmeal on. All right, I lightly, lightly sprinkled the counter, okay? Um, it has been 40 minutes. Looks beautiful. Feels really warm. Josh, turn the lamp on. Thank you. So you don't want to, like, really flour the surface. Um, because It will stick, but you don't want to, like, you won't be able to stretch it as far as you need to if you heavily flour it. But you also don't want it sticking to the counter. So I'm actually going to do just a little bit because you got to stretch this wide to fit those measurements. But this will feed our family. I always, when I do pizza, usually have a big salad and I always do wings. I have to next time we do pizza. Um, coming up here on one of our movie nights or game nights, I need to, I need to show you guys how I make wings. There's a couple ways I do them, but they're delicious. <laughs> and I literally use like a whole pack of wings at once. Um, because you know, hungry kids, they're growing too. So I will show you that because, oh, they're, they're phenomenal. Um, and it's kind of weird having pizza without them because we're used to always having them with pizza, but quick night, we'll probably have some chips on the side or something. I don't think I have salad. So just going to roll it out. And I know, I know with doughs, some people are like, oh my goodness, why on earth would you use a rolling pin? I do. This is what I do. Some people are against rolling out certain doughs with a rolling pin, especially when it comes to pizza, but this is not a typical round one that you can pat out. This is a very large rectangular one, and I have an audience. Don't mind all the noise as they drag the chairs across the travertine. All right. Boys, no. Hands out of the pepperoni. I, I know, but we're going to eat. Hang on. Um, you guys need to wash your hands anyway. <laughs> okay, well, you can have some after. Hold on. If I give it to you, I got to give it to all the kids. Actually, Mike's down in Loveland at Home Depot right now getting some materials um, for tomorrow. We're going to spend most of tomorrow building stuff outside. And, uh, yeah. Well, actually, he doesn't know it yet, but I'm signed up to do one of our lead preschool classes at church. So... I'm sure he will be here working on stuff while I do that because we have cold weather coming and we need to get things done and get projects finished and that's the only time he has. So let me see. I'm going to get my pan, see what that's looking like. Okay, it's not bad. Now you can use, you can do a stuffed crust with this, but tonight I'm not because I just don't have the time. And I actually don't even think I have the string cheese. I think my kids went through that, but you can totally... I'll show you when we get there, um, if we get there, because this is not wanting to stretch much further. Um, I'll show you what you would do if you wanted to do stuffed crust. It's a lot of cheese, so if you're not a fan of a lot of cheese or dairy. All right, not going to lie, the hardest part is to get this back up because it's stretched so wide. 
but we're gonna make it work. Sometimes I'll like take some of the flour and just dust this and roll it. But what I like to do is roll it back, flip this under and not get any tears. That would be great. Cause it's really hard once it's on the cornmeal to like arrange it. There we go. All right, we're gonna lift this up a little bit cause I made a little bit of an uh -oh there, but that's kind of how I do it. Hopefully the camera was angled well enough in case you wanna know how to do it. So I usually try to stretch it when I'm doing stuffed crust or really pizza in general. I don't like not having a crust. Um, when I do stuffed crust, I have it draping. Ah, we're getting a tear. Hold on, sorry. I have pinched that back together. There we go. Okay, you want it draped, you would take your string cheese and um, let's see. I don't even have anything to demonstrate. Maybe. All right. I make homemade cannolis. So if you guys want that recipe, they're flipping phenomenal. I don't buy them anywhere else. Um, so pretend this is a string cheese. You would just, you know, line it up all around the border like that. Okay. You would take your crust. Uh, I'm not going to be able to show you really well at that angle. You would take your crust and just literally roll it, cover, and then see where the dough's touching. You would just press down and form a seal and then do whatever you want to from that point forward. That's how you would do stuffed crust. I'm a visual person, so I like to visually show it. Um, now, since I'm not doing stuffed crust, what I'm going to do is just kind of roll this into a crust. It's not going to be pretty or perfect, you guys. I'm not one of those people. I don't try to make things perfect. Um, hold on, honey. I am all about presentation, but I'm in a hurry right now, and I got hungry kids that can care less what my crust looks like. So I am just rolling this crust up. I don't know if I mentioned it or not, but 500 degrees is what you want your oven to be preheated to. It's a little high. It's okay, though. Um, so I have that preheating always while I do my toppings because it takes so long to reach 500 degrees. And um, that's that. So I am going to going to put a little bit of oil on the dough here and just brush it on. Hopefully the lighting's good. It's really getting dark. It gets dark so early, especially where we live because we're kind of like tucked away in a little valley. So um, it gets dark much sooner than it does elsewhere around here. There we go. So we have that. I am not doing homemade sauce tonight because I don't have time. So I just have one of my Azure standard jars of sauce, which is fine. I dumped the whole thing. I know we like sauce. I know not everybody is like all for sauce. We like a lot of sauce and a lot of cheese. Um, there's nothing more I hate than pizza that has like no sauce on it and no cheese. So you at this point, can make yours how you like to. I don't know what that is. <laughs> well, they're happy, they're content, they're clean. So once this is in the oven, it's only like, for me, I usually pull it at 18. It depends how heavy I pack my toppings on. Remember, the heavier you pack your toppings on, um, the more your, your pizza is going to uh, weigh, so you don't want your toppings to slide off. So um, I got my sauce put on. Like I said, you guys do what you like at this point. I'm just gonna share with you how I do it. So I got that on. We like cheese, like I said, and it's a big thing. So I like to mix my cheese. I usually do a mozzarella, which I have here, and a fresh Parmesan, but I don't have fresh Parmesan right now. We're out. So <clears throat> I just did some Monterey and Colby that I had, and uh, that's what I'm gonna do. I like having like I don't know. I like a lot of color on my pizza. Personally, my kids would be fine with just pepperoni and cheese, but I do like a lot of different color variations. So we have done with this, we've done like barbecue chicken pizza with bacon. We've also done, I don't know, there's so many different kinds, like Hawaiian style. There's all different types, but usually on nights like this where I'm fast, quick, and in a hurry, I'm not concerned with toppings I pull out whatever we have and that's what we have um, so if you like meat while this dough's rising that's what I try to do the major this might not even be enough cheese um, the majority of the time when it's rising I usually like to just have everything ready to go so if you need meat you want sausage or beef on it 
you have time to do that. So I'm going to get my pepperonis, which are out, which all my kids have been eating out of the bag. I hope they eat their pizza. I'm just going to toss them on. I am very, like, uniform and symmetrical with stuff, so <laughs> might bother somebody out there. <laughs> um, anyway, we're going to do some pepperoni tonight. I also cut up, or I actually have some cut up bacon pieces. I have some bell peppers that I chopped up. I'm gonna have to grate more cheese because this is certainly not enough for us um, at all. And then I'm gonna show you what I do with my crust, what I brush onto it. I don't even measure, so I'm gonna do my best to share with you guys. I literally eyeball it because I really don't think it matters measuring it. But um, I will share with you guys what I brush on the crust. It is delicious and uh, definitely makes it that much better. So. We got the pepperoni out. This is where I usually put just a little bit of extra cheese on the pepperoni. And then over here I have some chopped um, deli meat. We got some black forest ham. And I cut way too much. I'm not going to use all that I cut. I like, yeah, I'm not always the best at eyeballing stuff. Um, sometimes I go a little bit overkill and that's what I did with the ham. So we have some ham. We have some bell pepper that I chopped up. Once again, the color, I like, I like to just mix it up a little bit. And uh, all my kids eat this. So like I said, if you have picky eaters, you can just cut it in half. Um, yeah. And then I love, love, love red onion on pizza. My husband does too. My kids, um, Almost all of them like onion. My other son, he can just pick it off. I don't, <laughs> I'm not one to do special orders around here unless they really, really dislike it. Um, but he'll eat other stuff with onions, so that's why I don't waste my time. Um, so we're going to pop some onions on here. And put that all around. Once again, went really overboard with the onions. We do want to taste our pizza, so I think I'm going to stop there. And then I have a bag of my bacon pieces, and I am just sprinkling that on, trying to evenly distribute that. Oh, I thought I wasn't recording for a second. I'm like, oh my goodness, no. There's no way I could take all these, top ah, all these toppings off at this point. That scared me for a minute. Um, I don't know why I thought it was not recording. That, that would be a bad day. That would mean I'd have to redo this all again at some point. Okay, so we got our bacon on. And then this is when I go over it again with some cheese, which I'm going to do more. I'm going to do a little bit more of the Monterey and Colby. Oh no. Okay, I thought my cheese grater was in the sink and dirty. Oh, I need to clean my oven, oh my goodness. Okay, woo, something spilled. I think I made lasagna in it last, and it, it spilled because my lasagnas are just as ridiculous as most things I make. If you guys want a recipe to that, actually, you know, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to go there. I'm going to do that because it's out of this world. I'm going to do, I got, I got ideas. Um, that'll be coming. Anyway, so we got our cheese sprinkled on. At this point, I'm going to bust out this granulated garlic. I'm going to try and reach my parsley flakes and I'm going to find my Italian seasoning, which is right here. So at this point... I am pouring, I really hope this is a good angle. I feel like so much stuff in the, so much stuff in the background. So much noise over there. Okay, there we go. So I am just, usually I do this with basil, but um, I did put a good amount of basil in my uh, dough as it is. Don't forget, because I seasoned it. So I am going to show you what I do with these two ingredients. All right, now my oven's preheated. My kids are hungry, so I'm going to speed through this. But I take a stick of salted butter. And I cut it in half. Once again, like I said, I don't measure. Sometimes I add a whole stick of butter. I don't know. It varies, I guess. How unhealthy do you want your pizza? Um, it's pizza. It shouldn't be healthy. Um, I'm going to stick half a thing of butter in here, and I'm going to melt it real quick. Okay, I put it in for a minute, and it's pretty much melted. I usually like it a little bit more melted, but I'm going to mix it up. You want it melted. <laughs> I just prematurely pulled it out. Okay. So you got that, and then once again, oil, like I said, I don't measure. I just want it to cover all the crust. So I have my half a stick of butter, and I'm just pouring it in. I do this so much, I just like, I don't know. <laughs> I, just, 
you, you don't want it all oil, but maybe like a quarter cup or ish, about a quarter cup. And then I dump the garlic in once again. You can start with a teaspoon, see if you like it. I am just steadily pouring it, you guys. I don't even measure. But I really want a garlicky flavor on my crust. It's like floating on top. That's how much garlic's in it. And then I do parsley flakes. You can do whatever you want. But I like a seasoned crust. And I think it looks really pretty with the parsley. Um, oh, come on. It's not like wanting to come out. There we go. I think it looks really... No, that's not enough. I don't know. Like I said, I don't really measure. Um, but I'd say... By the time I'm done, probably two tablespoons at least of parsley and probably two teaspoons of garlic. So you do whatever works for your taste buds. Um, my family deals with the way I do things. So uh, anyway, um, I am going to give that a good mix because the garlic does settle to the bottom. And it's just a buttery, it's got butter, oil, and uh, garlic scoop in and you can see the garlic um, at the bottom that settled in and I just spread this out and it oozes it goes down it goes into the mix and it is so delicious you guys so for me the seasoned crust personally isn't enough I like to do this and usually when I have fresh parmesan cheese I get like the really fine grated kind not like the wood pulp shaky cheese um, but I know I'm guilty of using it too, but it is like, there's wood pulp in it. Legit. Um, I like to take the finely grated shredded Parmesan cheese and sprinkle it. I know like, I'm wishing I had it guys, but I don't have, I, I sprinkle it evenly across this and it sticks to my goodness. I really, like, I need to, uh, I need to clean my oven. It stinks terribly right now. Good thing you guys can't smell it from in there. But uh, yeah, it's, it's smelling pretty intense right now. Um, anyway, so you can see how much I have left. I probably went overboard. I probably could have gotten away with two tablespoons of butter. But like I said, I never measure. I just do things the way I need to do them. So there is some left over. But anyway, you get the point. I am going to go ahead and pop this. Oh, I have a stack of pepperoni sitting here. Um, and get a few more pieces. I'm going to go ahead and stick this in the oven and, uh, just give it a little bit more of a pop of color. Well, look at that. And it's ready to go. 18 minutes. We'll see. 18 to 20 minutes is the sweet spot. Okay, guys. Oops. I had forgotten to put that away. Okay. So I'm going to share with you guys and I wanted to do this. I'm not showing my face because I'm literally, I've been hugging goats and there I'm, I'm dirty. Um, I've been doing all kinds of crazy today. Um, I did recently, my Azure standard order did not even get to show you guys it for the month of September because I got so sick right after, like the day after I picked it up. So sick. And then I was sick like all week. So never even got to show you guys that order. There was a ton of things on that order. Um, it was a really fun one. So I'm kind of bummed I didn't get to do a video on it, but I'm going to share with you guys what I would have shown you in my Azure Standard order because I want to do one, I want to show you guys every Azure Standard haul, one way to use some of the ingredients they have in ways that you might not know. So like I said, so we're not looking at you guys, even though it's my camera. Um, so like I had said, I would do, um, usually I do wings in a salad, but I have no salad and my wings are frozen solid. So I have a lot of these. I have way more than these. I just pulled out four to give you an idea. You guys get chips for your kids and like the plain chips are always the last ones remaining. You guys see where I'm going here, right? They're always the last ones remaining. I have a ton of these, okay? Even my kids who don't like sour cream love this, okay? Um, my husband hates sour cream. I've snuck it, like, so I, I don't even have to sneak it in food. I can just tell him, but he's had the food before and he knows it's that good, so he will just sit there and eat it. Um, so I want to share this little tip with you guys. So pretend this is my Azure Standard Haul, guys, um, which it's not. And we're out of spoons. They're on the dishwasher. So I like to do this with these chips and make them disappear. What you need is the Nancy's Probiotic Sour Cream which is exactly 16 ounces, I'm like way up there, sorry, which is exactly 16 ounces. 
And I like to just get that mixed up. Max, oh my goodness, Max is eating all my mess off the floor that I made while cooking dinner. I know, there's always a mess. Okay, I don't know where my scissors are either. Somebody took them, so I'm gonna be dramatic and get a boning knife here and just cut into this. This should be in a mason jar anyway. Um, that's how I store it. So this is the Azure Standard. You don't need a pound of this. I buy the three one pound packs. Um, but this is their onion soup and dip mix. You see where I'm going here? The chip dip. Mm -hmm. It's good stuff, guys. Good stuff. Um, so this is how I use up all these plain chips before they go bad, guys. Um, what you need, my kids are playing trucks and they're loud. I'm so sorry. Um, you need a quarter cup of the onion soup mix, exactly a quarter cup into exactly 16 ounces. That's the ratio for making it. So I buy this in bulk, quarter cup, quarter cup of the onion soup and dip mix goes straight into the 16 ounce of the sour cream. And that's the, that's the measurement for this. Um, the tricky part is trying to mix it in, which I can do, but because I'm like filming myself, I'm getting a little stressed. This might not work, even though I do it all the time. So I will bring you guys back, but it does work in here. I promise. Um, slow, you do it slow and you don't have to make yourself a different dish. So, um, it's the end of the day. I don't want to do, <laughs> <I don't... coughs> excuse me. I still have a cough. I know I was, I was doing good for a little bit, but I still have a cough. I feel like it's going to linger for a while. Um, this time around, <coughs> excuse me, I'm trying to cover my cough. Let's see. All right. <clears throat> and that is what you do. And then you can get a good, good amount mixed in there, fold it in a couple times. And this is delicious. My kids, like I said, the ones, the people in my family who do not like sour cream love this. I don't, I don't get it because that's all it is. But this is a great way to use these products. If you order them from Azure Standard for quick little things like this, like when you have no sides in the house, this goes good with like sandwiches if you do it for lunch with your kids, whatever. Just a filler. That's all it is. A little filler. Um, this pizza hardly is enough for us all now. Um, but it's it's late. Mike's actually still not back. He's still loading up at Home Depot. So it's been a while. Um, it's all blended, all mixed in. And my hands are messed. I know I'm going to wash them. Don't worry. But just to show you guys. Oh, there is a fly and it is not happening. Not today, Satan. All right. <laughs> there are flies in my dip. There you go. Mmm. Okay. Can't let my kids see this because it'll be gone before the pizza's out of the oven. Pizza has eight more minutes. I'll be right back. I know. I look terrible. <laughs> but anyway, um, if you save the lid to this, you can close it and no flies can get into it and no kids. All right, guys, look at this. A coyote? Okay, that's okay. They're supposed to be outside. Look at this, guys. Beautiful, beautiful pizza. Nice, crisp crust. Um, this is just one of the most favorite things to make when it's pizza night. This is usually our go-to. I will make homemade calzones, and those are out of this world. Totally different dough I use. Um, obviously, the oil looks like it burned, but... The pizza did not burn at all. It is just, it's actually really hot because I just pulled it out of a 500 degree oven. But it is just absolutely beautiful, you guys. Um, I really hope you give this pizza a try on your next pizza night. We try to do those every other Friday so we don't get played out on it, even though we never do. Look at this, guys. Cuts beautifully. Kind of dripping everywhere. <laughs> dripping cheese everywhere, but look at that. Absolutely just perfect. Um, really love this pizza. My husband got home just in time. 
And if you guys do stuffed crust, this will be oozing out with the cheese. This is just, I really hope you guys give this a try. Um, one of our favorite pizzas. Well, guys, I'm a mess. <laughs> I'm glad I was able to get this video up for you guys. I had so many people before requesting, um, requesting for this recipe. I hope you guys give it a try. If you guys want any other recipes, let me know down in the comments below. We cook all the time. I cook all the time. <laughs> I cook all the time. I bake all the time. I love cooking and baking. That is a big passion of mine. And for our dinners, I cook, I cook for us every night. Um, for our dinners, I have over 80 different dinners that we do. We never eat the same thing like within two months unless we choose to. Like there's a wide variety of recipes I have. So if you guys want it, leave it down in the comments below. And I'm, I'm going to get this cut up and get these kids and hubby fed. I will see you guys on the next video. Until then, take care and God bless.